Hello everyone and welcome to Mr. This is Asia and here is Bhutan. Now let's get this show on the road, shall we? Bhutan sits on the right of that giant smile-shaped mountain range, the Himalayas, where you will find the tallest peaks in the world. Nothing's really known about the early, early past of this country, encrusted as it is in myth, but things get clearer in the seventh century when Buddhism was brought to the verdant valleys from Tibet and bit by bit suffused all the land. Bhutan consisted of a series of small kingdoms until the Mongols ruled over all, until their own power faded with the end of their Yuan dynasty. Bhutan Bhutan was effectively unified in the early 1600s by Shabdrung Nawang Namgyal, who strengthened the country to resist Tibetan invasions, building a string of fortresses and putting in place a dual religious and secular government structure. Administrators were so worried that disunity would occur after he died that for 50 years they told people he was still alive, living in a meditative retreat, eating only bananas and milk. While people picture Bhutan today as a peaceful, happy place, it was really rather belligerent in the past, not only at frequent war with Tibet, but also waging war on Mughal. Mughal India and invading and conquering Kuch Bihar. The Maharaja asked the British for help and Governor General Warren Hastings agreed and the British kicked the Bhutanese out and ruled the region themselves. In the years following, Britain and Bhutan clashed several times, with Britain invading Bhutan and defeating the Bhutanese in 1834-35 and beating them again 30 years later, accumulating more land. Bhutan eventually learned that not angering the British could work in their favour with the future King Ugen Wungchuk, who helped the British in the Young Husband expedition to Tibet and gained a knighthood and more power Power, leading to him becoming the sole monarch of Bhutan. Britain's defense of Bhutan made sure China did not invade in 1910. Now, while successive kings engaged in steady efforts to improve Bhutan, it remained very isolated and very backward compared to other countries. Slavery was only abolished in 1958, and there was no actual currency until the 1960s, for instance. Definite backwardness appeared when, in 1988, Bhutan booted out 100,000 Nepalis for not being Buddhist enough. Not very nice. Today, Bhutan is still listed among the under developed nations of the world. But things are steadily improving. What lies ahead for Bhutan? Comment below, but for now, bye-bye.